In this video, I want to share a really cool drag and drop system that Hans shared in the forums. It's a powerful way to set up a system of dragging and dropping for regular hype elements that lets you create things like this puzzle and it has snapping and all kinds of really nice features. As an example, it lets you get a regular ellipse like this and perform actions when it crosses over elements or when it is dropped to another element. So this really opens up a lot of cool techniques for your hype documents and I want to show you how you can use this yourself. I recommend downloading this drag and drop basic example hype document from the forums. I've linked it below this video and in this document you'll see really simple examples of getting this set up. The key thing you need to have in your document is this hype drag and drop enabler.js function and also make sure you have the hype mutation observer function here and this helps detect things like when elements intersect with each other. It was created by Max Sieb also on the forums. So when we look at these elements within hype we can jump over to the identity inspector and look at the HTML attributes that are in place. So this data drop section has actually three options. It can be dropped at either red, magenta, or blue. If we were to delete those other colors, it would only be able to be dropped onto red. So if we try that again, try and drop it here, it'll snap back in place. But if we drop it on red, it'll work. So that's a way to set it up to drag it onto multiple drop targets with those classes. So the targets are defined by their class. This is blue, red, and magenta. And there's also a custom behavior that can be triggered when the drop has occurred. Here's how those custom behaviors look. You'll go into the scene inspector and create a timeline that is triggered on the color. So, for example, for blue, the custom behavior name directly matches the custom behavior name defined here in the scene inspector. So if you look at that blue timeline, it looks like this. So that's the key thing about the drop custom behavior you need to know. This name value matches the name set up here in your scene inspector. So let's build one of these ourselves. I'm going to first create a drop target, just a regular rectangle. And now let's create a draggable element. This will just be an ellipse. I'm going to make sure that it is the frontmost element so that it drags over that drop target and change the color so we can see it better. The first thing to do is make sure that your draggable element can be actually moved. So let's switch over to the action inspector and set this up to on drag control element position. Next, let's go ahead and set a class name for our target. Let's make this target bucket. And then that's pretty much the basic stuff you need to set up for your target, unless you want a custom behavior to trigger on drop. Now let's switch over to our draggable ellipse. Stay in the identity inspector and first turn on the data drag option. Type in true and then just add the rest of them. We want to data drop and the value here we want to match this target so we're going to call that bucket. And then the last one is data drop snap true. I'm just going to sequentially add these features so you can see how they look. 
So I'm going to move this to the first scene so it's easier to preview. Of course, you can also preview current scene and browser, but let's just jump into this. So now we have this set up to receive this element, and the ellipse will snap to the top left corner of whatever size our drop target is. So if this was even a really small rectangle, it will drop right to the top left corner of the top left edge of that rectangle. Now if we drop it here, it won't snap back, because as you remember we did not um, drop in this option. We don't have data drag reverse. So we can add that if we want. And then when you preview, you'll see that it jumps back to its original spot when you release it. So that's it. That's the basic usage for using this draggable library that Hans created. If you need to support older browsers, you'll definitely want to use this Intersection Observer polyfill, and that just enables Internet Explorer and older browsers. As you get going with this dragging and dropping toolkit, and you have any questions, let us know in the forums or in the comments below. Thanks.